Okay, every year people ask me what they should get their swimmer for Christmas, and I always tell them the same thing. Get a pair of drag socks made by Aquavolo. It's the perfect stocking stuffer for any swimmer. Honestly, there's no simpler training tool to build power in the water than a pair of drag socks. Go to aquavolo.com and use the code BRETT, B-R-E-T-T, at checkout and save 10%. The offer's good only through November, so order now. Okay, Dave Salo, welcome to my ISL podcast. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing well, Brett. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Coming from the bottom of a beautiful pool right now. Right. That's right. Well, yeah, that's that's sometimes where I feel like I belong. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. Now, you're the head coach of the newly formed Tokyo Frog Kings. How's that? How'd that come about? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I'm officially the head coach. Uh, I agreed back in the spring that I would be more than happy to work with the team. Um, the initial, initially, it was talked about as being the technical advisor. Um, but uh, I'm whatever they want me to be. But uh, I've taken the lead of the program. Uh, it came in large part to my association with Kosuke Kitajima, who swam for me the last three years of his career uh, back out in L.A. with Trojan Swim Club. And um, I guess I had enough of an impact that they looked back to me to uh, uh, help bring along the, uh, the Frog King. So uh, I think I'm at, they got a great coaching staff um, and uh, it's mostly comprised of Japanese athletes and the sprinkling of international athletes outside of Japan. And I think I'm doing as much to kind of create the team culture as, uh, as anything else. So, I'm bringing that on board. I think the, the experience, that, as you know, from college experience, that you can bring that, that team atmosphere, which is readily um, the key component to the ISL. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, interesting that you say that. How did they go about recruiting for that team? Because it, it is, uh, there's a lot of Japanese athletes, but there are some international. So how was the team put together? Well, I, th I think it's interesting. I think they, they first started with the bulk uh, of Japanese athletes. They've got some really good ones that are very competitive internationally. Um, and that was done by? Uh, I was Kosuke Kitajima's uh, management group. Okay. So um, uh, Togo, I, I don't know Togo's last name, but Togo has been my, my go-to. He speaks uh, perfect English. He's based in Japan. Uh, he went to school in, uh, he did some, some schooling in, in California, actually. Um, so I gave them a list of athletes that I thought they should consider. Uh, they, they kind of did their own little thing a little bit. Um, but I think as we learn more about what the strengths and weaknesses are of the Japanese uh, team, I think we'll be able to recruit better. Uh, I think our, full, our, our sole focus was to be com as competitive as possible. And uh, we want to do everything we can to make uh, kind of Frog Kings um, kind of a go-to uh, team to be a part of, and in, in large part because of the, the tremendous uh, television support that they're getting from Asahi TV. Um, and we want to expose some of the international athletes to the Japanese market uh, for them professionally. Uh, that was kind of the, the I think, the, the key component to getting Vlad Moores off to join the group. Mm. Um, so I think uh, we've come in here really competitive. Um, uh, we were second in our first match. We were third close behind LA Current in our second match. We have a, a match starting tomorrow, which will take on, um, I think, New York Breakers are in that group and uh, California Condors are in that group and uh, I can't remember the other team, but We've been competitive. Um, we're doing, we're just we're having a great time enjoying it and swimming pretty fast. So we're pretty happy about it. Awesome, man. How did you figure out your strengths and your weaknesses? And, you know, a guy like Vlad, obviously coming into the team adds a lot of value, but how did you know that you needed someone like that as opposed to maybe a, a breaststroke or a flyer, you know, and, and, and just, did you know much about the Japanese swimmers themselves? I don't know much about the Japanese swimmers, to be yeah. honest. Even when um, I watch them swim, I'm like, shit, that, that kid's good. Yeah, outside of uh, Kosuke Hagano and, and uh, Ryosuke Ire, um, I didn't know a lot about their athletes, but they really have stepped up. Mm. They, they're, 
I love working with them. They're very disciplined. They're they're organized. They they followed my lead on a lot of things that we that I'm trying to implement to help build the team. Um, but I think that uh, I did not really understand the ISL. So I need to, I, I, until I got here, I really didn't understand the ISL and mm-hmm. and how the points worked and the skins thing and and the money and all that stuff. But now that I'm here, you get a better sense of uh, what our strengths are and what our weaknesses are. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm getting a better handle on how you evaluate and do the analytics on, on the matches so we can look at our strengths and weaknesses. And basically you want to be very competitive in the top four, maybe top five of every race that you're in. And then I think as they look forward down the road that you'll just have to recruit towards being top four or five in each event. And then you've got a really pretty good shot at, uh, being the top, uh, semifinalist. Um, we got to strengthen, uh, our medley relays are pretty strong, but we got to strengthen our freestyle. Uh, Japan is, is not real strong on the, on the short 50, 50 is a lot, uh, pretty good on the 50 fly and 50 back, but, uh, breaststroke needs work and 50 freestyle needs work. And that's really critically important in the skins game. So as I don't know if your listeners are aware that, uh, the ISL um, has the 400 medley relay for men and women dictate who gets mm-hmm. to select the skins event. Yep. And um, in our first match, we lost 48 points on the women's skins match um, because uh, LA current were able to select the freestyle. And they had the two top freestylers in, in the game. So we lost 48 points right there. And when we were right close to probably, probably beating them, uh, they just they just slammed us, so we, we ended up finishing second in that first match. But but I, I think going forward, we have a better sense of where we need to recruit from, and I think we'll I think that uh, there won't be the I think maybe there's some skepticism on international athletes joining the Frog Kings, and they didn't they don't have to move to Tokyo, but mm. that wouldn't be a bad thing either. But yeah, uh, but I think that I think the general the general. Uh, management crew with Kosuke has a big vision of what this team is, what it can be. And uh, they're looking, they're looking at this as, as a legit thing. And they, they're talking about training camps in California for the team. And um, uh, outside being in the bubble, I think they've got some big plans for the Frog Kings. Awesome. Now I'm assuming most of them, most of your team don't speak English, but how, how do you build a team? How do you build camaraderie? How do you, how do you communicate you know, the, the ideals and, and the, the vision of what you want, how's that all happen? Well, I think the first off is that because you've got such a large group of uh, Japanese kids who are kind of coming under the umbrella of the national team, that they're, they're used to the discipline and the organization of, of training together and being together and stretching together and all those things. And what I tried to implement are just the nuances that, that I learned from college coaching. So as an example, uh, I, I, I told the coaching staff before we got out here that we were going to stretch together as a team mm-hmm. and have that time of about 10 minutes to be gathered together and, and associate with each other and do the same thing together. And I said that we would uh, run our warm up together. So we do warm up together with everybody. And I said that I would run the first uh, training set for everybody together at the same time so that we have kind of shared experience. And I think shared experience is really important. So once we do the warm up, the stretching, the warm up, and then the first set together, then we break out into three different groups. And they were really instrumental in buying into three different groups of athletes, uh, a short sprint, which they assigned me because everybody assumes I'm a sprint coach. Um, and then uh, a breaststroke IM group and then a kind of a long axis back freestyle group, middle, kind of middle sprint group. And they were already in that mindset uh, that their, their team was going to be broken out like that. And then we've had great cooperation with all our international athletes. And uh, we only have a couple home coaches that are here, a couple from Japan and Bruno Fraudis' coach Ari is here. Um, and we've been able to kind of, we've, we've kind of given the, the kids the understanding that uh, we're going to come in with prepared workouts and uh, we can modify them a little bit. But uh, if your home coach sends you a workout, you know, we might work around that, but it's, it's really truly probably more of a team 
um, environment than I think I see with all the other teams and talking with the other coaches, a lot of them are basically just, uh, they're handing off the workouts to the home coaches mm -hmm. and home coaches send out the workouts. They do that. Uh, the coaches here at ISL are there to help them with splits or, or technique or whatever. So we're more of a genuine team and, and we, we modify the, the training schedule for each athlete. So they're not all doing exactly the same training Plan, but they're doing the same workouts together and we, we modify according to the athletes that we're working with. So they've bought into that. Um, then I've done a few little things like um, I taught them how to cheer and um, they're pretty good at that, but I, I wanted a nuance to that, that uh, basically defined the frog King. So uh, anybody that watches the ISL meets, they'll see us go. We'll do a, 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 we'll do a one, two, three frog King three times. And on the third time we do a little hop and uh, <laughs> they still laugh when we do the hop. But when we, when we first did it, they were like, this is really stupid. But, <laughs> but it kind of defines the Frog Kings and they're yeah. all kind of uh, excited about it and having fun with it. So we're trying to create a um, uh, common experience and group yeah. experience that, that when they leave here, they'll remember those kinds of small things that defines them as a team. And uh, it's been fun introducing them to those, those techniques. How do the athletes get to know each other? The ones that obviously coming from different parts of the globe, what have you done to kind of build the team and get the athletes to understand who they're swimming with? Well, I think you asked her a little bit earlier about the language barrier and, and the Japanese kids that are on this team are, are eager to use what English they have. Okay. Um, so they're, they're not as bashful as, uh, you might find when you, when you visit with, with Japanese uh, kids. Uh, so they're eager to, to, to share what they understand. Um, the, most of the coaches on staff from Japan have a pretty good understanding of, of, of English. So that's been really helpful. We've got, um, uh, couple assistant coaches and management that speak English perfectly well. So, um, I'll tell you, Brett, you know how college, um, you get in those deep college ex uh, meet experiences and you're giving them the, the, the rah-rah speech and you, you fumble over your words and you say the wrong things. And what's been nice is that I have to stop every few sentences so it can be translated to Japanese so I can gather my thoughts for the next couple sentences. Yeah. And uh, so it, it's actually, I think I've, I think, I think I've been giving better speeches now than I ever have in my life <laughs> coaching. So, um, so I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been made a little bit more difficult because of the COVID uh, yeah. rules here, yeah. because you, you got to stay masked up the entire time. You, mm. you, we, where we go to eat, it's a small little um, three by three table that you each get to sit at and you're all kind of spacing forward as you were in a classroom. So you, you can talk to people around you, but you, you, you don't have a lot of uh, uh, conversation going on like you would in a, a mess hall or something like that. So yeah. it's been different um, when you're on the bus, you gotta be masked up. But, but again, I think the, the stretching together has been really good and the, the warm up stuff together has been really good. And, and, um, and, the, and the, the athletes, the non-American athletes uh, have been talking with the kids. I, kids, international kids are pretty interesting. I've always had international kids on Trojan Swim Club. And, yeah. and they all seem to communicate without a common language. And yeah. they, they figure out, they, they, they speak slower and, and louder even though the words don't mean anything to anybody. So yeah. it works out pretty well. Well, obviously they got the Olympics in their home country next year. Who's someone that you didn't really know before that has impressed you that you think may be a contender next year? Uh, well, I don't know last names very well. I'm trying to, to plug uh, first names to faces and events. And Yui, who swims the 400 I am on the women's side, mm. it's, man, everybody that watches her is just very impressed by her. Uh, just hit uh, uh, ease of swimming, um, effortless look, uh, but she's just dominating the 400 I am here. And she looks really, really strong. Mm. Um, again, I, I spoke to the, the group that's doing a documentary on Katinka Hozu uh, over the next year in preparation for Tokyo. And, and they've, they've kind of looked to Yui as kind of the competitor that Katinka is going to have to face. And, mm. and uh, but I think she's incredible. 
Um, Kosuke Hagano, we saw him in, uh, four years ago. But the guy, he's, he's just very serious about his swimming and he's very, very good. And he's dominating the 400 IM. They're really good in the IMs. But we've got this kid named Takeshi in the 50 fly, 100 mm. fly combo. He just he's a powerhouse, just a small little guy, but he just gets up and, and uh, races pretty strong. And I tell you, I, I, we, I did a workout with those guys yesterday and I had, I keep changing my plans based on the re- reaction from the athletes, kind of what I'm sure you did when you were coaching sprinters too, that you give them something, you see how they react, then you, you might change direction. Just, you want to keep them going. And he, he, he we were supposed to do four of something and at three, he said he was done. All done. I'm done. I quit. And uh, I said, okay, Takeshi, that's, that's okay. Um, but then I changed what I was going to do. And all of a sudden he was interested in what we're going to do. We were, we did some 50 meter bands uh, on the bands assist. And he goes, Oh, that's kind of cool. So he got up and I went a 20 point uh, 50 meter butterfly on a, on a stretch court. So I got him to stay in a little bit longer. So that was nice. Cool. Nice. Uh, working so that psychology. Good. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Butterflyers, uh, Suzuka, uh, psh, just, again, one of those that's dominating the event here at, at ISL and, and just effortless. And uh, what I've really gotten to do is to watch these kids and their training and just just, just amazed how disciplined, they're very focused. They got, their technique is just crazy with these kids. And I, yeah. I think they, they're learning great technique so early on in, in Japanese swim schools that's carrying through to – uh, their development as, as international athletes. So uh, those are some of the kids I think I'm really impressed by. Well, one of the things I've always been uh, hugely impressed with the Japanese team is they always have a routine before they get in the water that, you know, they, they have 20 to 30 minutes of stuff that they do on land. That it just seems like it's just bred into them. Um, how, how do they develop that? Who comes up with that? And, and how do they buy into that? You know, it's funny. I, I, I was talking with David Marsh the other day and he uh, had a, a period of about a year. He was coaching uh, Yosuke Ire and uh, David said, yeah, I, I told, I said, David, David, these, these kids just stretch like ridiculously. They stretch. Mm. And David said, I, I know I was trying to get Rio stronger, but all I wanted to do was stretch. Uh, today we have pre-meet uh, preparation workout today. So they're kind of on their own. Um, but literally when we do the group stretch uh, together, it takes us about seven minutes. And then these kids will stretch. I watch kids stretching for 45 minutes, oh, yeah. 45 minutes an hour. Mm. Uh, they really, really believe in the stretching. They, they love it. They, uh, they, but Brett, they start stretching about 35 minutes back at the hotel and our team room mm. before we leave to go. Then oh. we do a group stretch and then some of them are stretching 35, 40 minutes longer. So mm, wow. uh, they're very flexible. That's for sure. Yeah. I think you guys are ranked. I don't know what the rankings mean, but right now I think you're at fifth, let's say, and, and they, they take top four into the final. So what do you guys think you, you've got to do to get into that final four? Well, I think uh, we kind of saw uh, when we, in our first match, we had a strong second place finish against LA Current. LA Current is certainly probably ranked number three, I think, three or yep. four. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the second match, when we were facing LA Current and the Lion Roar, or whatever, London, London Roar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we, we, I tried to keep the team focused on not trying to beat the Roar, but being focused on. Uh, being as close and maybe capturing the current because I thought we had a chance of beating the current um, there. And I, I figured the London Roar were more focused on, on LA current and LA current was more focused on the roar. And I thought we could kind of sneak up on them. We got close. Uh, we had a couple of events that didn't quite go the way they had in the first match. Um, but I think that uh, I think the match the four or four team match depending on which, which part of the semifinals we get to, uh, we'll, we'll probably play to our advantage if it's just the right matchup. So mm. we're really strong in certain events. Uh, the skins is that we're always constantly thinking about the skins. We're having a tough time maybe win the, uh, the dictate of who gets to pick the, the event uh, out of the foreign medley relays. But um, if they, uh, we, we kind of know where our strengths are and we're hopeful that whoever picks that, 
that skin event, it goes to our favor. 50 freestyle on the women's side is not our favor. Um, uh, on the men's side, we're pretty, we're pretty good across the board on the men's side in, in, in every, every 50. So we've got a shot at, at, at putting at least one person in the top two uh, there. The women's side, we're a little bit more restricted to um, uh, backstroke, uh, the, the butterfly a little bit. But uh, we're, we're, that's where we need some strength is in the skins events for the, for the women's side. So uh, we think if, if the matchup plays out right, we might be able to score a top two or three nice nice well listen this is uh super interesting stuff i'm, I'm loving watching swimming on on tv Good. and uh i'm happy you're out there doing this but listen this is not the dave Salo podcast okay this is just the tokyo frog kings uh, we're talking about <laughs> when you come back to the states my listeners are going to demand a full dave Salo podcast so make sure we're on I, that I okay so. <laughs> i appreciate it, brett thanks keep keep me in the front of the news so that i've got something to do absolutely all right thanks mate take thanks. care Right. Take care.